Wondrous greetings to my brothers and sisters in the Lord. It is so good to be here again another night. God having been good to us, we have come once again to represent him as kingdom citizens people. Amen. We talked about last night that we are people of royalty and people who are aligned with royalty have certain characteristics about them. They live like royal people. They behave like royal people. Amen. And we are glad that we belong to heaven and heaven belongs to us. Praise the Lord. Please accept greetings from my wife and others who have been saying we've been watching Charlestown every night. And so we also want to acknowledge those who have been following us and have been encouraged in one way or the other. The scripture that was read earlier forms the springboard for our exposition tonight. It's coming from that book of 2 Kings chapter 22. And we are still talking about preparing for Christ's coming with holy living. And for the entire week, we have been dealing with that and trying to hammer it home because it is a, a serious thing that without it, the Bible says, no one shall see the Lord. And so we are going to look tonight at a young boy who decided that he was going to dedicate and commit himself to the Lord Jesus in a way that would have made a great impact on the nation of Judah. And so I would like to talk to you tonight for a few moments on the topic, the tender heart of King Josiah. The tender heart of King Josiah. And the passage we read, we did not read the first verse that tells us a little more about him, but we are going to get into that. But I just want us to follow through as we look at this young boy whom God used to bring about national revival and restoration. So we get but a glimpse into a wild time of revolution and counter-revolution in the brief notice that the servants of Ammon, Josiah's father, conspired and murdered him in his palace, but were themselves killed by a popular rising in which the people of the land made Josiah his son king instead. And so no doubt barked the conspirators' plans. Poor boy. He was only eight years old. When he had made his first acquaintance with rebellion and bloodshed. There must have been some wise heads and some strong arms and some loyal hearts around him. Their names have perish. But now he must stand in the gap and be God's middleman. And so we are finding him here in chapter 22 of 2 Kings. We are told that he began to reign when he was eight years old. 
and his reign expanded for some 31 years. He's one of the best who reigned after Solomon. A great and a needed revival comes to the nation. Hilkiah, the high priest, is his counselor, assistant, and advisor. He now steps into the role of leading a nation that was steeped in idolatry. They had forsaken God. My brothers and my sisters, I dare say to all of us that when a nation forgets God, it is in trouble. The Bible talks about that Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I'm even afraid for the country we call the United States because we have become high-handed. We have become our own little world. And we feel because we are superpower and we have all this sophistication in weaponry and even in medicine and everything that you can think about, we can get along without God. While forgetting that God still says righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. So here we have Josiah. The Bible tells us something about this boy. The Bible says even though at eight years old, there was something in him that God saw that he wanted and that God was going to take him and catapult him into areas that will bring about shockwaves across Judah. He was going to do some things that would have caused people to wink at him and wonder what kind of upstart he is because he was now a revolutionist and he was now a radical. The Bible says that he did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all, I underline that, all the ways of his father David and did not turn aside to the right nor to the left. Wasn't it that what God said to Joshua? Turn not to the left, nor to the right, but walk straight and obey my word. And out of that which you would have done, your way shall be prosperous. Unusually, this young boy came to the throne at eight years of age. And this was because of the assassination of his father. At last, after more than 300 years, the prophecy of the man of God out of Judah is fulfilled. You would read that in 1 Kings chapter 13 in verse 2. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David. Note it, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. The Bible says, Josiah, at this young age, 
decided that he was going to be true to his God. And that he was not going to turn to the left nor to the right. But he was going to walk in the commandments of God. May I just say to the young ones here tonight, it is a delight to love Jesus. It is wonderful to love Jesus at a young age where you give him the best of your youth so that your mind has not become so tarnished and corrupt by the things of this time. You give him your all in your tender age and you watch God doing things in your life unimaginable. I think back on my own life. This little boy growing up, tending my father's flock. And at an early age, I felt God was calling me into ministry. And to show how serious I was about that positive impression on my spirit about the call of God, I had to get an audience. And so the audience became my sheep and goats. And I would sort of mimic people like Father Herbert and some of the old saints that used to come by and preach. And I'm telling you, I had a preaching time with the animals. I don't know how many got saved. <laughs> but, yes, I had my time. Yes, God was setting me up and was thundering in my soul that he wants me to be where I am tonight. Amen. So when you trust God at an early age, there were blunders along the way, but boy, God has been merciful. Are you with me? And he has kept me all these years. And just like Josiah, the Bible tells us that this young boy wanted to make a difference in his nation. Not the politicians, you know. It's the man of God. It's a child of God who is completely sold out to Jesus. And God is using the ones and the twos to show even those in high position that there is still a God. And that God is calling back our nation to repentance. Do you think people of Nevis need to repent? I believe so. We all need to repent before God. And the Bible says that there was a time as Josiah continued his reign that he came to the understanding that the book of the law had not been read for many years. It had been forgotten. And regarded as nothing more than an old dusty scroll. An old dusty book. Now it was found. It was read and it was spread. We should expect some measure of spiritual revival when God's people return to the word of God. So when the king heard the words of the book of the Lord, the Bible tells us. There were some emotions that went off inside of him. The hearing of God's word did a spiritual work in King Josiah. It was not merely the transmission of information. The hearing of God's word had an impact of spiritual power on Josiah. Note what he did. The Bible says... When Shaphan read from the book that had been neglected for many years, the Bible says that Josiah 
he tore his clothes. He wept before God. Because you see, he understood how important the word of God is. And he went into that time of weeping and, and renting his clothes in the strongest possible way. Josiah showed his grief on his own account and on account of the nation. And this was an expression of deep conviction of sin and a good thing. So for the next few minutes, we're going to look at a few things about Josiah. First of all, I want us to note in verse 2, let us note his direction. His direction. The Bible says, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. That was his first way of pleasing God was to make sure that he was in the right direction. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. When you and I follow God's ways, my brothers and sisters, it is God's business to do what he knows best with our lives, aren't we? And when you do right with God, you cannot lose. He blesses you. Some of you youngsters here, he will be preparing you to stand before kings and maybe queens. Oh no, who knows? Puts you in position that you never thought you would. But you have got to make up in your mind about your direction in life early. Holiness is for you. It's not only for the adults. It's for all of us. And that is what Josiah decided, number one, that he is going to give attention to his direction. And that is, he was going to make sure that he set his house in order and do what is right in the sight of the Lord. May I challenge all of us here tonight to understand that Josiah's God hasn't changed, you know. He's still our God. He still wants us to surrender to him. Completely and to walk in holiness. And as we're reading the scripture, we understand that the Bible says that Josiah decided that he was going to walk in all the ways of David, his father. And he turned not to the right nor to the left. So we understand that as he got his focus right, that God was now preparing him to do great things throughout the land of Judah. We are told that he broke down and burned all those images that were all across the land of Judah. He was doing what we call a real nation cleanup. Are you with me? And God wants us to know that he wants us to examine our own lives every day to see if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up. Are you with me? Examine our own selves. Because the Bible clearly reminds us no sin can enter his kingdom. So we have to ask God to search us. Whatever may be standing in between us and God, we have got to come to the point where we say, Lord, I surrender it all to you. I put it on the altar of sacrifice slain. The Bible says that when Josiah heard and saw all the stuff that was going on in Judah, 
his heart was grieved. And the Bible says that he made sure that he got his advisors and, and all those who would work with him because now he was coming with a strategic plan to make sure that the land was cleaned. So we note, as we said, first of all, his direction. Let us note, secondly, his devotion. His devotion. The Bible says, and he walked in all the way of David, his father. The man after God's own heart. Good example. Well, you know, David himself, even though he was a man after God's own heart, yet there was a time when he erred. But what? He came back to God. No one here tonight, no matter what you may have done or no matter how you may feel, let me tell you something. God does not learn anything new. Because if God learns something new, that means he's like you and me. He's all-knowing. And therefore, wherever you are in your life tonight, you can be guaranteed that God's love has not changed for you where you are concerned. So the point of departure is the point of return. And so if in your own heart tonight, wherever you may feel that you need God to give you a new perspective and a new way of thinking about him and going after him, listen, he stands ready to welcome that energy that you're putting into looking and searching after God. His devotion. He walked. In all the way of David, his father. But I want us to note something else about Josiah. Josiah, he not only ensured because his heart was tender. We not only note his direction and his devotion. But I want us to note finally his determination. Look at verse 2c. And he turned not aside to the right hand nor to the left. So what was Josiah about to do at this time? There were some things that needed to be taken care of. He wasn't there with just a name. He had come to the kingdom for such a time. And he was going to do what God wanted him to do. Because, you see, his heart was tender. He was humble before God. And as a result of that, God was going to use him no matter who felt threatened or who felt hurt. He was going to do what God wanted him to do. There are times that we need to... Just look at our own selves and say, you know what? It's not about Tom. It's not about Paul. It's not about Mary. It's about me and God. Are you with me? People may not understand you, but when you take a stand in the workplace, when you take a stand in the home, when you take a stand wherever, listen, sometimes you're going to be misaligned, you're going to be misrepresented, but let me tell you, one with God is a majority. God watches over us. He loves us. He wants us to make it. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be healed. Hallelujah. So what, did, what are some of the things that Josiah did? We are told in 2 Kings chapter 22, 3 to 6, if you know this, those verses, the first thing he did was going right to church, he repaired the temple. 
There were those who were holding up the monies and were not doing anything. And when he came on, on board, he says, listen, why hasn't the temple been repaired? Get the money out of the treasury and let's prepare the temple of God so God's people can come back into the temple and learn to worship Yahweh. The temple was repaired. The young man was radical. And there are times we have got to be like that these days. Because you see, the people out there are radical. The world people, they are radical. They have no fear. So the Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I'm not going to fear what man can do unto me. Because you see, I am protected. And so are you. So when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Bible says the spirit of God is going to lift up a standard against the enemy. So you and I stand with God. And when we stand with God, God takes care of his children. Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid. You and I belong to the kingdom. The kingdom of righteousness. The kingdom of holiness. The kingdom of boldness. Stand your ground. Do not bend. Do not bow. But continue to love and be humble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the temple is repaired. But not in verse 8 to 10. We said earlier that there was a return to the word of God. Kingdom people. We need to return to the word of Not just reading it and skim through it. But we have got to meditate. Are you with me? We have got to get our minds wrapped around the word. We have got to get this word soaked into our spirit. So that when the enemy comes in uh, against us. Uh, we can see and hear the word of God flowing out of us. Uh, and we are standing because the word of God is within us. Yeah. It's our covering. It's our covering. When was the last time you memorized a Bible verse? <laughs> Commit his word to memory. I mean, back in Sunday school days, and the teach us to memorize scripture. A lot of the scripture verses I know today, back in Sunday school. And very often when I am under the anointing, some of those scriptures just keep coming out of the computer system, God's spiritual computer system that he has built into me. When I need a word for healing, he spins it out. When I need comfort, I feel it coming out. See, sometimes you depend on friends to help you and you depend on loved ones to help you and they can't help you. But you need to appeal to the higher power. Are you with me? When it seems that your world is, is, is crashing in and Satan is making a joke of it and the Bible talks about that he roars as a roaring lion. That's what a lion does in the kingdom world is to roar so that the other animals will know, listen, don't come in my territory because I'm the kingdom of this, this uh, jungle out here. But you and I must understand that when the enemy rules at us we have got to say Satan I am not afraid because the blood of Jesus Christ covers me the blood of Jesus is all around me angel is supporting me I am being strengthened by the power of the risen God I remember there were times when I had bouts of sickness, 
and have had to apply the word of God. And Satan would rule and say, mm -hmm, it's all over. But brothers and sisters, he can't stand against a living word. It frightens him. When he sees your determination, when he sees that even in your moment of weakness, he feels that you're down and out for the count, but the word of God calms him like fire in your bones and rejuvenates you. Hmm? The word of God. It's powerful. Quicker than any two-edged sword. Piercing. Ah, I've seen drunkards who would be lying in the gutter. And my God, when the power of God gets into them. I remember when we had some revivals in, in St. Kitts some years ago when we were pastoring there. And I remember one night, and that, that week, every night was packed. There weren't any room on the inside. We had to borrow chairs from neighbors to bring to accommodate people. People were coming from Bassetty and all across Sinkits. Revival fire had broken out. And I remember one night there was a brother, there was a rum shop just on the other side of the street, right across from the church. And one night the power of God was so strong. I would never forget that. The power of God was so strong that a gentleman who was in that rum shop, the power of God took that gentleman and he ran right into the church and dropped at the altar and the power of God changed him at that moment. Changed him completely. Sober him up. You're talking about the word? It's powerful. I see many lies in that. And that week we had 60 persons who got saved. You talk about revival. You talk about Holy Ghost power. That's what the word does. No wonder Josiah wept. Because that book was just put aside. And neglected. And when you substitute the word of God with other things, then that is what happened to Judah. They went into apostasy. They went into idolatry. They were living their own way and their own, their own world until Josiah came on the scene and said, no more of this. We are going to get back to God. We'll get back to God. So there is a temple repaired. There was a return to the word of God. But there was a conviction of sin. Look at chapter 22 verse 11 to 13. When that word was read. Shaphan read that word. It was like melody. It was like music. To the ears of Josiah. And people were understanding. That that which they had put away. Was their lifeblood. And so let me say to all of us tonight, don't neglect the word. The word is what you and I have to live by. The word strengthens. The word of God enlightens. The word of God sustains us in our everyday moment. They, was con they were convicted of sin. But in chapter 23 and verse 4, we know that people are called upon to put away idolatry. Put away the idolatry. Lord, is there anything in my life that I value more than you? Is there anything that I am so attached to that it is separating my full allegiance to you 
And you're not getting the best of me because I feel so attached. It could be your cell phone. As good as it may be. Talking about the cell phone is good and it's bad. Very good. Preacher friend of mine came to visit the island. I was wondering why I haven't heard from him. It's unlike him. And so when he finally caught up with me, he said, man, I'm so sorry. I just bought this new phone. And I took it into the toilet. You know what's coming next. The new phone fell into the toilet. And I lost the phone. All what I had on it disappeared. Why do you take your phone into your toilet? <laughs> you mean you're so, you can't go in and do what you have to do without sitting in there with your phone? <laughs> Put away the idolatry. These cell phones are good. I, I must admire these young men because when I get back, I have a serious conversation to, with one of my young men. He comes to church, my God. I thought he's taking notes, taking notes, he's playing games. And he's at the controls. And I'm saying, what? And I've spoken with him. I think that spirit needs to be broken. It's an addiction. You know? Become so addicted to it that even in church, I am so addicted that even in church, it is something I just can't get away from. So addicted to it. It's good, you know. But you're in church to worship. You're not a, you're not a doctor. You're not on call. God needs your total allegiance. So whatever comes between us and God, we've got to examine ourselves and say, Lord, look, this thing here, this got to stop, man. God deserves better than this. When I come to worship, I come to worship. Are you with me? And I'm serious about my worship. As a matter of fact, we better be because when we get to heaven, here is the dress rehearsal room. Here is where we are now to worship because when we get to heaven, only then we are going to spend our time in worship and adoring the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So worship, worship. You have to put on your radio, whatever you need to do, worship. As a matter of fact, when you feel overwhelmed, worship. Are you with me? When you feel the heavy burdens, worship. Woo, worship. And see, things begin to change. Satan doesn't like when you get into that kind of spirit of worship. Hmm? So make it a habit and worship. So there was the putting away of idolatry. Then there was the putting away of immorality. Chapter 23 and verse 7. They were to clean up their idolatry and their, their sex trades. God said, you got to put this away. And Josiah decided that he was going to go and do what God wants him to do. And call on people to follow him. My, I tell you, when you read the story of this young man. And over the 32 years that he, he reigned, I'm telling you, the things that he did. Why? Because 
his heart was tender and he was humble before God and God decided that he was going to use that type of person to show that no matter how young you are, I can use you. I can use you. Then if you were to read in chapter 23, 21 to 23, there was the reinstitution. He reinstituted the Passover. They hadn't held the Passover for a long time. It's like you come into church and you're coming for a whole year and never have communion. And so he said, we have got to come back to basic. We have got to celebrate the Passover. We have got to remember what God did for us. And brothers and sisters, when you have a deep sense of appreciation for what God has done for you, you get into your Passover, your blessing. You know, we are blessed people. We are blessed. You know, we used to sing the song, I am blessed. I, th that's another thing I have too. Because I hear people the phrases that they have these days. How are you doing? I'm blessed and highly fit. Please tell me, what do you mean? What do you mean when you're telling me, I'm blessed? I mean, you're, you're drunk as a skunk and you're blessed? Please tell me, what do you mean? Jesus, the word of God says that the children of God are blessed in Christ. So people get carried away with these catchy phrases and not realizing. Listen, even though you may be saying it, you've got to have a real understanding about what you're talking about. So you must have your Passover. Get your family together. Father, head of the household. Call your family to worship. If you don't have a father in the home and you say you're the mother, get those children together, it's worship time. I remember I used to get annoyed and now I look back on it. My, my father used to wake us up around Maybe 4.30, 5 o'clock at mornings. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there seemed to be some. <laughs> I, I was saying, oh, Daddy, you're waking me up. I mean, at this hour of the morning. Yes, we are going to have family devotions. And we sit and we read the scripture and would pray. And maybe those kind of things kept me out of a lot of trouble, you know. You're covering from within your own household. Covering your children. Don't be afraid to lay your hands on their heads and bless them in the name of the Lord. Cover them. Cover them. And now I look back on that. And I said, you know, yes, my father, my parents were doing the right thing because they wanted me to walk the way of God. Finally, there was further reformation as Josiah continued to bring about this tremendous National Reformation, chapter 23, verse 8 to 20. You can read all of those in your spare time and see what he did. No wonder the Bible said there was none after him, like him or after him, because of what he did. What legacy, what would you want people to remember you by when you've left this earth? Just think of that for a moment. What would be written on your tombstone? 
man of God, daughter of king, child of God, love people. Love the Lord. As we go from this place tonight, we are going away remembering that Josiah, his heart was tender and he humbled himself before God. And as a result of that, God was able to use him in a way that the history books bears record of what God did through him. May I say to us tonight, let us keep on the fiery line. Let us keep loving and keep serving. Shall we stand in the house as we bring this to a close? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Let's sing that again. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. O Lord, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Anyone here tonight? You want to make that decision? Don't want to keep the service longer than we should. You have heard the word. The Spirit of God has spoken to your heart. Do you want to make the decision and meet me here at the altar? I'm waiting for you. Anyone in the house? Jesus, just like young Josiah, made his commitment that he was going to serve God. And God used him. And God can use you. Anyone? These moments are precious. Never know what God will do with your life once you surrender it to Him. Then let Him work out His will in your life. Praise the Lord. Meet us back here tomorrow night. Bring as many young people tomorrow night. Yes. I God bless you. Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, these services are designed to help us to come to the place because some point we got to meet Jesus. Yes. Anyone else? Ah, yes. Yes, the Spirit of God is faithful. I surrender all faithful, faithful. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Here's one standing here. Let us, let us pray for her as she stands here tonight. I know not how God's wondrous grace to me in power. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing men of sin. Praise the Lord. Yes. Pray her through, would you? Pray with her. Yes. Praise God. 
prayer through. Satan's business is to prevent people from not seeing the light and coming through. Jesus. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Even one. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Bring them into the kingdom. Bring them into the kingdom. Yes, the Spirit of God is just moving in her life right now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.